taking a look at the Silk Tone Micronaut. For the uninitiated on this channel, it's worth noting at the top that I'm a massive fan of low wattage amps. Uh, the vast majority of my pretty limited amp collection here in the studio are all five watts and under. Uh, I'm something of a connoisseur of kind of modern low wattage amps from a combination of boutique and non-boutique amp companies. So when something comes across my radar uh, that is in that vein, but feels like it's doing things at an elevated level, it piques my interest. And today we're talking about the Micronaut by Silk Tone, a phenomenal four watt amplifier with a ton of great features uh, built by hand by Silk Tone here in Sacramento. Uh, and it's worth kind of pointing out at this point in the video uh, that I have spent a fair amount of time over at Silk Tone HQ over the last year and a half. Uh, I consider Charles, who owns Silk Tone, to be something of a friend of mine. And so there will obviously be some bias in this video beyond just the sponsored content itself. I don't consider sponsored content on this channel to be something that colors my opinion on things, but it's worth noting that Charles is a friend of mine and, uh, and I'm a big fan of his work. So allow that to kind of inform some of this stuff just so that we get that housekeeping out of the way right here at the top. But all that being said, let's go ahead and talk about what this amplifier is. This is a four watt amp head with a ton of versatility and a ton of great tone in it. You have a volume control, a tone control. You have a reactive load line out volume control as well. Uh, and a little mode switch right here between modes one and two. Uh, let's run through what everything is. Uh, your gain control is obviously your overall volume and gain for the amplifier. Uh, the lower it is, the quieter and cleaner, and the louder it is, the uh, louder and grittier it gets. Um, but with some caveats. On the back, you have a uh, 8 ohm output and a line level output, which means you can run it to your cabinet. Uh, or you can run it to your DAW directly. You can run it into the front of another amplifier and use it as a tube gain stage. Uh, or you can do what I tend to do in these situations and run it into wet effects, allowing you to essentially run your drive pedals into the front of your amp and then run the back of that amp out to stereo wet effects and some sort of cab sim solution, therefore giving you a really great hybrid rig in between your actual tube gain staging of an amplifier while still giving you that kind of flexibility of a direct rig. I have featured amps like that on this channel before. The Micronaut, however, adds a few things to that equation. Uh, thing number one is a line level output control on the back, a actual volume control to kind of set gain staging appropriately with where you're headed, whether it be wet effects with less headroom uh, or a particularly weak preamp that you might need to like press a little bit harder or an overall kind of balancing act between your amp gain and how hard you want to hit that amp down the line. But there's an interesting complication to that line level out here. Uh, most, if not all of the amps that I have uh, that have this single ended line level out um, mostly lack that volume control, but I think all of them have a very static output from the preamp stage or something like that. This actually has a reactive line output uh, tapped from the transformer itself with a dedicated output, um, which not only allows you to have that kind of like volume output control, but it actually does have a reactive load on that line level output, giving you kind of a better approximation and sense of accuracy and realness uh, as if you had a cabinet attached within this thing. So if you're sending it to a cab sim or directly to your DAW or to your console, you actually will get a more lifelike and realistic response from the Micronaut on that line level output than you would on most other single ended amps that have this kind of feature set, which for my money is very, very fascinating. There are some clean tone things using that line level out on this thing that I find to be shockingly good even without a cab sim. Having said all that, for higher gain things, I still find that a cab sim is pretty essential. 
uh, I find that you still kind of start to lose something and get a little bit of that overly vintage direct into the console kind of fizziness uh, with this. But again, there is, you, we all know what that sound is, that, that, that amp into console sound that just feels grating. And even in extreme settings on this thing, you get a much more lifelike version of that, which essentially just sets your starting line for cab sim EQ curve stuff for treating that so much more forward than you would with anything else. And in a similar vein to that conversation about kind of above and beyond feature set on a low wattage amp like this, the Micronaut has this one and two switch here on the front. The flagship Silk Tone and the Astro are both known for this switch that allows you to switch between chiffon and raw silk, a switch that bypasses your tone stack and turns the amp into a single knob, vintage voiced, very sputtery, angry, uh, high gain amplifier. Not modern high gain, but vintage high gain and that, and that kind of classic, very fizzy sense and everything. Something that appeals to a lot of people does not so much appeal to me. The Micronaut has this mode one and two switch. Mode one is a slightly more mid scooped uh, amp profile less volume, a lot more clean headroom. Uh, you can push this thing pretty far and still get absolute sparkly clean tones. You can stack your gain staging into it while retaining all of that clarity and quality of your wet effects. Mode two on this thing changes that dynamic. It's a flatter response. You get a lot more volume, a lot more gain, a lot more of that. You can push this thing into borderline fuzz territories just by kicking down to that mode two, even with a single coil guitar, it's pretty aggressive. However, that tone control still exists in that context, allowing you to kind of tame boxy or low end to filter out fizzy or high end in, in the extreme settings. It actually, in my opinion, and in my testing and estimations, uh, makes mode two on this a far more versatile option than raw silk in some of the bigger amps. Uh, in this video, we will showcase that mode two with wet effects in front of it and how even at high settings, you can still use your playing dynamics to produce active, lively, but still responsive and sparkly and clean guitar tones. They can still be clean and still can be articulate even when just by digging in, you can get into like full on like exploding amp territory. That intro song is an interesting blend of those mic'd tones and those direct tones. We really just kind of like took it pass by pass, switching up mic placements, switching up recording methodologies to just try to get the most kind of intricate and interesting combination of things. But for the next part of this video, I want to kind of make things a lot more cut and dry. So the next section we go into, we are going to be a lot more cut and dry with what we're doing. Uh, we're going to take the Micronaut into a studio with a little bit more space where we can kind of turn up a little bit better treated room than my, my home studio here. One of the things that I find so valuable about covering an amplifier is exploring its headroom and its versatility with a pedal board. Uh, I mean, speaking for me, guitar directly into amp is almost never what I'm doing. It's one thing if you're testing an amp and trying to get a handle on what its tonality is, but for me, the real world application lives and dies on how it handles my pedal board, uh, or kind of any pedal board, but especially mine. And so uh, I think that it's incredibly important for me to kind of cover this amp through that context. Uh, it's worth knowing that uh, as of today, there is also a demo from Ryan at Demos in the Dark, who will do a much better job of miking this amp up in an amp room, playing it direct in, uh, really showcasing the amp in a vacuum kind of tonality. And so there'll be a link to that down below, and I recommend you check out his video as well. Uh, but for here, we're really gonna kind of like lean into what this channel is all about, which is the broader signal chain and context. We're going to mic this thing up with an AEA N22 ribbon microphone and the Silk Tone 1x10 prototype cabinet that they were kind enough to loan me for this video to go with this Micronaut. Uh, and we're gonna mic this thing up, we're going to run through a bunch of sound samples, and then we'll circle back to here in the studio and we'll, and we'll kind of take a look at some of the direct in tones. 
But for now, let's start things off with the amp mic'd up with that ribbon mic in the studio. So let's start things off with my go-to settings on this amplifier. I've actually been using this amp live for the last month and a half or so. Uh, and my kind of go-to settings on it are uh, volume or gain just below noon with tone right about 130. Uh, and that gives me some nice sparkle and clarity. It rolls off some, some muddier lows, especially with close mic'd amps. Uh, and it, but while, while still offering up all of our clarity and our cut that we need to kind of like really get through a mix with our wet effects. Um, for these sound samples, we are using my Bunting Melody Queen T. We have a Wolf Tone Rabid Bitch Telly pickup in the bridge and a Mojo Tone Gold Foil in the neck. So that was the guitar bypassing my pedal board directly into the Micronaut, mic'd up with that AEA N22 ribbon microphone. Now let's go ahead and bring in the pedal board and kind of experiment around with our compressors, our Benson Boost, and our uh, delays and reverbs. We're using the Therme, the Timeline, and the Big Sky throughout these sound settings. <laughs> Okay, using that clean tone, let's now bring in the 1981 DRV. So instead of just pressing compression and clean boosting into this amplifier, let's actually add some clipping as an early gain stage without that compression, without that boost, to hear how the clean tone on this thing reacts to volume and clipping in a single gain stage ahead of it, and how those wet effects stay intact uh, with the headroom on this amplifier. <laughs> Okay, staying in mode one, let's start to kind of explore that uh, natural amp breakup on this thing. We're going to take that gain control up above noon so that it starts to break up on its own, even with a relatively clean single coil guitar like the bunting. We're also going to roll back that tone control, giving us a darker, rounder tone. And then we're going to bring in the Benson Boost, set pretty hot to really kind of add color and saturation and to really kind of like, really kind of activate the tubes, kind of showcasing just how kind of like gritty and focused and interesting the natural tube overdrive can be, even in mode one on this thing. So 
So let's jump over to mode two on this thing. Like we said earlier, this is the higher gain, more vintage voiced, and a lot more kind of expressive version of this thing. It's less scooped, it's higher gain, but that's not to say that it doesn't still play great with wet effects. So let's take this kind of first pass with it set relatively low on that gain staging uh, and really leaning into uh, the natural breakup and the harmonic character of the amplifier, but while still having wet effects in front of it in a way that kind of allows them to get chewed up a little bit, but in that fun way, because that's an important thing about a good tube amp is putting your wet effects into the front of that amplifier in a way where they get some color and saturation without feeling like you murder the headroom. Let's test the limits of that a little bit. We're going to bring in the Benson Boost and kind of see just how much we can activate and excite the preamp tubes in this thing in mode two while keeping those wet effects intact. <laughs> be a little bit irresponsible to not look at just how kind of like aggressive this amp can get in this context. So let's go to a higher gain setting on that mode too, really kind of like lean into that aggressive uh, kind of like amp driven thing that this thing is so good at in mode two. Like I said, for me, that the, the secondary mode in this thing, having that tone control still allows you to focus it in a way that allows you to get a ton of really great break up just with the amp by itself, which I find so fascinating. <laughs> It's worth noting that just because we're in those settings doesn't mean that it's not still touch responsive. So we're literally gonna change nothing but bringing in a compressor to kind of help tame some spikier dynamics. We're not bringing our lows up too much, our low dynamics. Uh, we're mostly just kind of 
helping focus the playing for some finger picking. We're going to bring in our wet effects. We're not going to gain it down very much at all. I think we're going to leave it about the same, but let's hear our wet effects in that high gain mode too and how you can kind of find a really great delicate balance between tube saturation and sparkle. <laughs> Okay, we're going to wrap things up here with the direct-in sound samples. Uh, we are switching over to our Jennings Voyager with McNelly Chaplin pickups. Uh, board is all the same as it was earlier, uh, except we have the Micronaut in between our wet and dry effects. And instead of running out to the cabinet, we are running out to the Strymon uh, Iridium with the amp stack bypassed, just using it for cabinets. Uh, all of our effects, compressors, drives, all that stuff set aside. This is what the direct in stuff sounds like. <laughs> So we're not going to go super deep into this part uh, in terms of like knob positions and all that. We're just going to kind of explore what you can do with some kind of like ambient sound design uh, and stereo width with this kind of setup. So let's 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 dig in. Mm -hmm. 